Hi, my name is Jeff Nelson. I'm a historian and the archivist at the Saturday Evening Post, and I'd like to talk to you about our website that we've dedicated to the memory of John F. Kennedy. On the site, you'll see a lot of the coverage of the Post presented, and maybe you'll get a new appreciation for the president in this 50th anniversary of his death. The Post coverage of Kennedy began in 1953 when he was a junior senator from Massachusetts. He is the subject of an article called The Senate's Gay Young Bachelor. Uh, not what you think. By 1959, 1960, he already had announced his intentions to run for the presidency. The Post covered his uh, campaign by two reporters, Beverly Smith and Stuart Alsop. But Mr. Smith uh, eventually just capitulated to the charm. He said, I, I just, I admire the man so much. And he said, I'll try to be objective about it in my articles, but he isn't all that objective because you can tell at the end he really believes in what uh, Kennedy is preaching. But here's their articles about campaigning with Kennedy and the Kennedy magic formula, which is an interesting article because Alsop starts out by saying, I'll give you 10 reasons why Kennedy can't win. And he said, religion is the big one. He's going to be the uh, first Catholic president. We've never elected a Catholic president. He's got his family connections. He's young. He's inexperienced. He took the wrong side on the McCarthy hearings. There was all sorts of things going against him. And yet, Alsop believed he was going to win the Democratic nomination. He believed so strongly, in fact, he filed this story saying Kennedy has won it, even though it was a month before the convention. By 1961, they're running articles on how is Kennedy doing. And the incredible thing is that it has not been a good year for Kennedy historically, and yet his numbers are, are climbing. He backed the Bay of Pigs invasion. It was a, it was a fiasco. And yet his popularity numbers went from 70% to 80% as a result. People wanted to see a guy in the White House who was maybe a little crazy, but he's going to tell those communists just where to get off. In 1962, the Post was able to report on one of Kennedy's few real successes in the Cold War, which was forcing Khrushchev to back down uh, and pull the missiles out of Cuba. And that was probably the most decisive turning point in the Cold War. And then an article appears in 62 on Dinner with the Kennedys. The political reporter who is so enamored of Kennedy during the campaign trail is invited to dinner. So he writes about his experiences. Here's 1963, and it's a month before the assassination of Kennedy. The last mention of him that we see as he's president is an article that says they hate Kennedy. It is a uh, response to his call for a uh, civil rights amendment. He wants a civil rights rule because he's seen how bad things have degenerated down in Birmingham. The author is saying that if he comes south, uh, he's not going to get a favorable response. These are people that voted for him in the last election, but they've turned on him. Following the assassination, the Post ran a memorial issue. And this is a copy of that issue uh, with a cover painted by Norman Rockwell. And it's the same cover that was run during the campaign. This was their tribute to Kennedy and features several articles written by people who knew him as well as reporters who were on the scene. In fact, this is a reprint of that issue, which the Post is now selling. The Post covered Kennedy rather extensively for the years of his presidency. As you can see by all the articles that are spread out here, as you'll see on the website, we've put on our gallery a lot of images from the Post from 1963 that shows the country in the middle of change. This was a country that was saying goodbye to the 1950s and embracing a new, more fashionable, more sophisticated view of itself. We think it's important to put these articles up on the web and make them readable again because we think that Kennedy deserves to be assessed historically and not sensationally. And the best way we know to do that is to go back to the original sources, read the words uh, of the people who knew him at the time, his contemporaries, the people who were reacting to him, who voted for him or voted against him. We think this is the best way to reconstruct Kennedy and get a sense of who this person was before the tragedy of his assassination. We hope that you'll come to the website, take a look at our stuff, and get maybe a new appreciation of John F. Kennedy, our 35th president.